so we hit the road again. 128 kilometers from here. So that's to drive the 128 kilometers back to Svolvaya, where we'll stay the night before leaving. Gunnar and I had been chatting about the effects of the weather on our trip. We agree that though the photography may generally be better in the sunshine, it's nevertheless extremely enjoyable, even when it's cloudy. Even so, that didn't stop us from hoping for better weather. We're soon passing Reiner again. It's certainly one of the most beautiful places in Lofoten, even on a cloudy day. We're now retracing our steps from yesterday through beautiful scenery, but seeing it in a slightly different light. The clouds hanging on the mountains, the mood has changed. But the effect of it is still breathtaking. Norway always seems to paint a picture using sky, sea and mountains and a little colour by painting the houses red and includes a few boats. Of course, there are lots of things to do and explore here, but it's mainly a feast for the senses. But I can't help wishing we had a sunny day. This is where we've been staying. The raw nature has a poetic quality about it. Its ability to create moods and feelings almost eerie, and as though there were some inexplicable method of communication whereby creation groans, and somehow, on a sunny day, it plays its tune in a happy major key. But often nature plays her music in a minor key, like a forlorn maiden pining for fulfillment. It all began in 1981, when a farmer unearthed large amounts of charcoal and charred stones whilst he was ploughing his field. So he alerted a local archaeologist, Cora Ringstead, who, in 1983, unearthed the remains of a longhouse which had been occupied between the 6th and 10th centuries. This is the exact site and is the largest building ever to be found from the Viking period in Norway, measuring 83 meters long, 12 meters wide and 9 meters high. As a result, the longhouse was reconstructed beside the location of the remains and the museum opened in 1995. It has a great number of attributes. It's right next to the location of the original longhouse. It is a reconstruction of it 
And as one surveys the surrounding countryside, it really stirs the imagination. This is where they lived 1,500 years ago. The original site was here, so the location and aspect are the same. A tour of this historic place is a must. Shops and cafe make it an ideal stopover. The guides are not only dressed in medieval costume, but are excellent in their knowledge of the history of this place. The museum starts at the beginning with the farmer's discovery, and is excellent in every respect. Great lighting, many artifacts and explanations, headphone guides for those wishing to know more, it was fascinating. Here, glass shards from 700 AD, found to be from the Frankish Empire, revealing this was a sophisticated people even at that time. The large number of artifacts, each telling their stories. The longhouse itself having its central aisle and the reconstruction not only showing how life would have been at that time but even staff members in costume portraying such activities. The demonstrations of the staff really enhancing the experience. Great care has been taken to represent life at that time the wood pile, a weaving implement, even embroidery, knitting and table games. One can imagine life here a thousand years ago. It's interactive also. If they wish, visitors may try out the clothing and put on the helmets. Note that Viking helmets did not have horns. Legend and stories added them later. Their religion was polytheistic. They worshipped many gods. This is Freya, the Norse goddess of fertility and love. Everybody has heard of her. Friday is named after her, Freya's day. And her husband, Odin. Wednesday, in Old English, means the day of Odin. The longhouse was very well designed, so smoke would escape through the roof. The chieftain's throne with its back to the wall, so no enemy could sneak up on him. This is the Yggdrasil room, and this the Yggdrasil tree, from which they believed the will of God radiated. Yggdrasil is said to mean Odin's horse. Norse mythology well represented here. A superb visit, not to be missed. So we continued on to Svolvaya having a discussion about what we'd just seen. Guna, as usual, explaining the anomalies of Norwegian culture. And we continued to talk about the days of the week. For instance, in the Norwegian language, Saturday is literally take a bath day. When King Hakon VII fell in his bathroom at his estate in July 1955 and broke his thigh, a newspaper reported, It's bad enough breaking his leg, but whatever was he doing, taking a bath on Thursday? The story has passed into Norwegian folklore. 
The weather continued to be cloudy. Today the clouds very low. We stopped occasionally to film. Even in the clouds it was beautiful. We soon arrived in Svolvaya and the fast hotel where we were staying. It's one of the new breed of hotels that is springing up in Norway. We didn't see a staff member all the time we were there. They texted the code for the main entrance and the room. The room was very nice. Breakfast of ham and cheese sandwich and coffee was hung beside the door. Everything we needed was here. Visitors can actually walk in, see if a room is available, pay and check in. The only human in sight is in the mirror. This is the internet lounge. I'd actually stayed in a similar hotel in Oslo on my last visit, but being rushed I had no time to film it. A relatively new concept in hotel management. It works well here. The next morning we headed to the airport. It had been a great interlude in Lofoten that we had thoroughly enjoyed. We then flew to Oslo, then Guna flew to Valde, and I back to London. All that needs to be said now is, thank you Guna. Where are we going next?